All right, welcome back. This is Jim from Small Time Outlaws, and this is the ninth video in this beginning game programming in Monkey tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be revisiting the string variable type that we went over briefly a while back. Uh, in Monkey, strings are actually objects with uh, several fun little methods attached to them that you can use to, you know, play with the the string data that they hold. And if you don't know what an object is, well, you need to hold on for two more videos and you might just find out. Alright, so let's, let's get on it. Let's get stringy. Let's get stringy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to go over real fast things are these special characters and how to use them in Monkey. So, so these special characters are characters you can't just type into the IDE and have them work inside a string. Well, for instance, the first one we go over is the actual quotation special character. So, all right. So instead of creating a variable, I'm going to go ahead and print, and we're going to print off someone saying something. Now, normally, if you wanted to quote somebody, you'd do it like this, right? And you say like. John said, I'm a happy guy. And then you close the quote, and then you make another quote to close the string, right? Well, as you can see from your color, your syntax highlighting, that something is wrong here. And I think it's pretty plain to see that it's got to do with the fact that these quotation marks are supposed to close strings off. And if you use one inside the string, you're closing it off too early. So the way to get over this in Monkey is use the special character Q. And the way to do that is the tilde key, or shift tilde, tilde, I don't know how to say it, and then Q. And if you're familiar with it, like the C type languages, they have the backslash quote to include a quote in, or they have like backslash and to end line. But in Monkey, instead of a backslash, it's the squiggly. And so now if you wanted to include a squiggly in the string itself, you just use a double squiggly. So you say, I need a squiggly in here. And you just double squiggly that. And I can print these off so you can kind of see what's going on. John said, I'm a happy guy and I need a squiggly. And another special character you might need to use from time to time is the tab. Now the reason you can't just put a tab in there, because as you can see, I, I just hit tab and it's going to go on one character because it's IDE dependent. So these tab characters don't really count. And when it goes to the translator, that's this, that, that extra white space gets chopped out. So if you haven't guessed, you use a squiggly and a T for tab to put insert tabs and then you say this is tabbed and I will run this and there you go it's tabbed look at that and finally the last special character you'll need to know is the endline character in it. basically what this does is it breaks the string up into separate lines it that you know it, it's like pressing enter on the keyboard and I'll just I'm not very good at explaining these things, so I'm just going to show it to you. So, something like here is a line, and then we will use the squiggly N for end line. And then we'll say here is the other line. And we'll build that. You can see it printed here is a line. Whoops. Here's a the line, then it hit return down. Here's the other line. Okay, now we can get rid of this stuff because we don't need it anymore. Now, strings in Monkey are just arrays of individual characters with some, and then they have some added functionality, like I mentioned, that we'll cover a little later. So, when you want to access a single character in that string, you can do it kind of like you do with an array. It's kind of cool. Not every language does this, and I really appreciate that Monkey does it. So let's say I wanted to print off the O character, okay? So basically, you can do this with a string variable or the string literal here. So if I wanted to, 
I'm going to go ahead and create a variable. Using the string literal might be a little confusing. So I'll make a string variable called str and initialize it with monkey, because we're using monkey. And then I'll use my variable name followed by bracket, and then this indicates the index in this array. It's pretty much an array of characters of which one I want to access. So it starts with zero, just like with the arrays, and then one is the O. So when I print this off, we should get O, right? No! So I bet you're wondering why why we got this number? 111? One, one, one. Well, in monkey, the the characters are actually integer representations of that character. So in some languages actually have the character type, the char type, like Java and C++, they all have the char type. But monkey doesn't have that. It just has the integer representation. So that's what that's actually what strings are. They're just an array of integers. And what I mean by integer representation is it's it's that character's ASCII code. So I don't know if you're too familiar with the ASCII codes or an ASCII table, but you can Google it. I can actually actually I'll go ahead and Google one right now. We'll take a little field trip. Field trip to Google. And you type an ASCII table as uh, I don't like that one. We'll look at this one. So I don't know if you can see this. So what what, what was that number we got? 111. So we go down here on the. You want to look at the decimal, and we find the decimal because it's a 10 base, and bam, 111, and the character is O. So great. You know this is something that's pretty handy for programmers to memorize. You should have this memorized by tonight. That's your homework. All right. Now what makes these strings not so much like arrays is that you can't actually modify the string directly using its index like this. You can only read the characters. You can't change them. So if I were to try and change this real fast and change that O to an I so it says Minky. I want it to say Minky. Well, first I have to figure out what character code that is. So uh, I'm just going to <laughs> I'm not going to look it up. So I'll say the next one is L-M-N-O-P. So that'll say Mpunky. Mpunky. But it won't say Mpunky because strings are read-only. If you didn't see that, let's look at it again. Strings are read-only. Don't forget that. I can mess you up. Okay. I was just like with arrays, you can also slice these strings up to only access chunks of them. So let's we're going to print string starting at index 1 and then we're going to go up to 5 but not including 5 don't forget so this is just going to say o oh, 1 2 3 4 5 so it's going to say onke yeah, let's run that and see it says onke now you can also use this chunking or this slicing to access that one character from the array like we were trying to do before basically you just figure out which index it is you want and then the second number is just that index plus one so this is going to include index one go to two but not include it so this is just going to give back the O as a string instead of as its as its integer representation see get the O back that's just one way to do it there's another way to do it. it's kind of cool and I'll show you a little later and in fact I'm going to show you in the next video because I don't want this go to, to go too long so I'll see you in the next one, and if you got any questions, email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com or you know what to do. Lay some comments on me. Pour some sugar on me, if you will. All right, see you in the next one.